Next is working with textures. Let's go over the basic texture types and uses. What we can do to recreate any kind of real life material is use images to uh, better represent those materials. So in my library, I have a textures tab, and this is where we have a lot of pre-made textures that you can use in your scene. If you've used Keyshot for a while, this is probably gonna be really familiar, but I can double click on any material to edit it, like this black plastic right here. And so I have some basic, uh, some basic properties for that material, and I also have a tab for textures. So let's talk about what these textures are and what we can do with them. First of all, I can select some sort of texture. Um, let's grab something like a wood texture, and uh, one of my favorites, because it's really easy to see, is this walnut texture. If I double click on that, you'll see this is walnut.jpg. So this is just a image or an image of a walnut texture. So if I wanted to make this plastic look like walnut, I can just grab this image, drag it over and apply it onto my material. And you're gonna see it's asking us for a texture map type. So we have a couple different types of textures and we'll talk about those. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set it as a diffuse texture or a color texture. So under the textures tab, I now have that wood that's been applied for the diffuse. So what is a diffuse texture or a color texture? Well, all it's gonna do is it's gonna replace the base material color, which previously was black, and it's going to replace those pixels with a with an image, right? So now it looks like walnut. Uh, if I want to change the scale on this or how it's being projected, I can hit the drop down next to mapping, and here you can see the slider for scale. So I can adjust the scale of that texture. I can rotate it. I can use my mapping tool uh, to help me position it. Right, so if I want to get it to line up perfectly, especially on that rounded corner, which can be really, really difficult, uh, I can try to get that matched up by using the mapping tool. But uh, just a quick intro. So uh, the diffuse texture is gonna replace the material color. Let's talk about some of the other material, or excuse me, some of the other textures and how we can work with those. One texture that I use a lot is a bump texture. So what I can do is I can grab this wood texture and I can just drag it directly over to where it says bump. And now take a look at my material. What a bump texture does is it reads the grayscale values of that image to represent height on the surface. So anything that's a light value or white is gonna be a peak. Anything that's black or a dark value is gonna be a valley. The really important slider for working with your bump textures is this slider here for bump height. Depending on how high that's set, zero being no bump texture, one being usually the, the default the highest, Right, I can control how much texture I actually see there. I usually keep it at about 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Right, so now I get a little bit of texture. Now the material is actually reflecting light like wood would. Um, but yeah, now I can actually see that texture a little bit better. Uh, and let's say I wanted to apply this texture as both the diffuse or color texture and as bump. Easiest way to do it, hold down Alt, and then you can just drag your texture over from one to another, and it's gonna duplicate it. So now that's gonna be a more realistic representation of the material. I have the wood as it applied as both a diffuse texture or a color texture and a bump texture. Right, so I use the these two textures quite a bit in order to get more realistic results. Um, we also have a few different types of textures. Uh, specular textures control the reflectivity of a material. Um, and there are something, or there are textures that are called normal textures. These are a little bit more advanced, but you have some in your textures folder. So if you expand the little drop down next to bump maps, you'll notice there's bump maps and there are normal maps. Bump maps are grayscale values, so that you, they just use the grayscale to represent height on the surface. And you can use any image for a bump map. Additionally, we have normal maps. Normal maps are going to include three color information to control how light bounces off the surface, uh, or actually controls the direction or the angle of how light bounces off that surface. So if I take one of these and I drag it over and I apply it as a bump map, by default, what Keyshot's gonna do is it's going to check the normal, ch the normal map checkbox for you. If I uncheck that, you'll see I'm really not getting much detail on the surface. If I check it, I'm getting a lot more definition on that surface. So if you're using these normal maps, make sure you, little, you check the uh, checkbox for normal map. Uh, and again, usually the bump height, I decrease down to 0.2 or 0.3 because that gives me a little bit better results.
uh, but a bump texture or a normal texture is going to change the way the light bounces off the surface. And Keyshot by default will respect a normal map and it'll automatically check that checkbox. If you do uh, add in a bump map, I'll load that in right here. Make sure you don't have normal map checked. If you do, everything's going to look a little weird. So since that's not a normal, na normal map, we don't check that checkbox. Let's talk about procedural textures because they're related, um, but a little bit different. So in this scene right here, uh, I'll select one single part and we'll make this a little bit easier to see uh, by just focusing on one individual piece of geometry. I'll right click on that piece of geometry and I'll hit show only. This is a great way of focusing in on some particular part. So I do this a lot, especially with complex scenes where I have a lot of pieces of geometry. So let's double click on that. And that's that same material we were working with. But what we can do is work with procedural textures. These are going to be a little bit different than your image based textures. So what does that all mean? Well, uh, procedural textures are going to be math based textures. So think of them as a difference between a raster graphic like a JPEG or a bitmap image uh, versus um, a vector graphic, something that you make in Illustrator or a PDF. Uh, those PDFs in Illustrator files are infinitely scalable and they don't rely off of pixels. Procedural textures are similar. You can access the procedural textures by selecting any of the texture types and hitting this little drop down right here, which currently says none because we have no textures applied to it. You'll notice that I've got 2D and 3D procedural textures. What are really cool about these is, for example, let's throw in a 3D color gradient. These textures are not being constrained by images. You'll notice here that I have this gradient from black to white. Uh, what's cool about this is that it's pretty simple. It's just a black to white gradient right now, but this is a great way of adding in multiple colors onto your material. Uh, I can add in multiple color stops. So now if I add, hit that little plus, I can add in a red point to my gradient and I can individually control these, grab these, slide these, move them around. Um, you'll notice as well that all of these textures are going to have, or generally they're going to have some control over the scale. Because this was modeled in millimeters, that scale is one. So that gradient is one millimeter wide. If I type in 30, oh, three zero, then that gradient is gonna be 30 millimeters wide. Now we can actually see that gradient a little bit better, but we have a ton of control with these procedural textures. Also, since these are procedural textures and it's a 3D texture, that means I can use my mapping tool to actually change the orientation, the rotation, the scale, the position of this gradient in 3D space. So this is a great way of getting more control over your color. So in this case, it's going from black to red to white. Uh, what I could also do is I can change that to different gradient types. So I can get, for example, a spherical gradient or cylindrical gradient. We have all these different gradient types a really, really powerful one is view direction. This will change the color of the material based off of our view or our camera. So you'll see that this is going from black to red to white, and that color is based upon the angle of my surfaces. So that's working with the view direction color gradient. And there's tons and tons of options that you have in here for all these different gradients. Uh, color gradient is one that I use um, a good bit, but we have leather, we've got uh, cellular textures. Here's another fun one, camouflage. Uh, and again, what's neat about these, at least the 3D procedural textures, is that no matter what your geometry is, it's going to wrap perfectly around those surfaces. Uh, let's talk about one that I use a lot for the bump texture. So I'll select the bump. I'll use the drop down right here. And let's use a noise texture. If you look at that surface, I now have a really, really nice noise texture. So it's a really tiny pattern of just kind of random noise. So if you're ever working with plastics or metals or paints that don't necessarily have a clear coat on them, this is a great way to get a little bit more detail in that surface. So I can scale that down, type in a small value, something like 0.3 bump height. Let's bump that up a little bit more, something like 0.2. But now if you look at those surfaces, it's got a great little bit of texture, it really helps add to the realism. Now I could right click and hit show all parts. And you can see what that plastic material with a little bit of texture looks like. 
uh, next to one of these metal materials. That, that's just a little bit of roughness on the texture. But the difference there is this material just has a little bit more depth to it. So yeah, noise texture is one I use a lot to add in a little bit of texture. But again, take some time to experiment with these because there's so much good stuff uh, in, in the uh, procedural textures. Uh, I briefly mentioned opacity textures. Opacity textures let us define the visibility of a material. A quick example of that, again, I'll hit show only, just show the single part. Double click on it to make sure I'm working on that right material. Go to the textures tab, go to the opacity texture, and now I'll type in, or excuse me, I'll select a mesh. Let's try a circular mesh, All right? So now if you look at that, uh, this is actually controlling the visibility of my material. So anything that's white is visible, kind of like masking in Photoshop. Anything that's black is invisible. So you can create meshes, um, wire patterns, all sorts of different, uh, different techniques. Uh, but the takeaway here is with an opacity texture, we can simulate holes or visibility in our material using this texture. In this case, it's a 2D procedural texture, but it's a great way of quickly creating something like a speaker mesh or something like that. I'll disable that, hit show all parts. Um, but yeah, so that's a quick overview on different texture types and how to use them. Next, let's talk about labels and see some of the changes that we made with labels. Now that we know more about textures, we'll cover labels in our next video. For more tutorials, quick tips, and webinar recordings, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can learn more at keyshot.com learning. Thank you for watching.